Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm going to talk to you about Coding 101. But before we get into the world of Java, C++, and Python, which will probably end up boring you, I want you all to participate in an exercise. I'll show you two photographs, and I want you to try and find me in those. I'll give you three seconds for each photograph. All right? Anyone? No? How about this? Anybody? No? <laughs> well, that's because I was never there. <laughs> I never had the courage to do anything. I was always the last one to speak up. Always the last one to volunteer. Every day was like a chore for me. Like a typical kid, my day would end with the last tick on the checklist. But it was my brother who finally introduced me to the little world of programming. The ideal escape a black canvas, QWERTY as my palette, and green the major hue. I love programming. There was something about making a program, even if I would fail most of the time, that would always make me happy. I could go on into the night, coding one thing after the other, and yet I would wake up happy. It would be those days where I would get the recommended six to seven hours of sleep that I would feel I was missing out on something. And so, like every other lunatic out there, I decided to investigate why. Now, like most investigations, it didn't bear fruit in the beginning. In fact, it wasn't until the school carnival came up. Tattoos, rides, and definitely some amazing food stalls. As it turns out, on that day, the 11th grade council were invited for a ride on the Columbus. Now, if you were to tell any 11th grader that they'll get a free ride, they'd probably end up looking like this. There's just a small problem with that. I cannot stand heights. Like, literally. My displacement was zero because I was right in the middle of the Columbus. Barely 15 feet high. Yet, I probably looked something like this. <laughs> now, despite that, I really want to say that I was able to finish my ride and had a happy end to the evening. But this talk wouldn't be that fun if that happened, would it? So, I failed, quite spectacularly for my dad. I'm pretty sure I was almost crying by the end of it, and I'm sure I was trembling. Now, like every other high school kid's embarrassing moments, I decided to bury it, to forget the experience. It wasn't later, much later, when I was working on another one of my computer science projects that included artificial intelligences that this came up. So for context, an AI, is nothing more than a bunch of code that is able to do a ridiculously high amount of trial and error to come up with a solution. Just think of an AI as the silicon equivalent of a two-year-old, making obvious mistakes and then learning from them until it gets absolutely perfect at it. For those of you who still don't understand what AI is, just imagine Terminator and Skynet, and just imagine them way less aggressive and less advanced. Now, it was during this study that I found out how ubiquitous AIs were. I mean, they were everywhere. Google, Yahoo, Facebook. Even the filters we use on Messenger, Snapchat use them. And then I thought, wait a minute. AIs don't really know anything, do they? I mean, they're as hollow as they get. They basically keep trying out a solution until they end up with the answer. Hopefully, everyone understands what AI is. But how many of you can tell me what RI is? Anyone? Well, truth be told, I just made that up. It's real intelligence, human intelligence. And the thing is, this RI is what goes into making an AI. An AI can only exist because of our inputs, right? Well, as it turns out, searching for the answer to this question led me to a stark realization. I thought, if we can create a technology that can learn by repeated failing, then why can't we find the solutions to our problems by mimicking the same tech? I mean, we can't just force our brains to overcome our fears or do some tasks. It's the experiences that make us who we are. 
is the feeling we get when we finally achieve something. Well, that was the theory I came up with. But it wouldn't be so good if I couldn't prove it to you now, would it? And so I started looking around Jaipur for something new, something that scared me. Well, there was no skydiving, <laughs> no bungee jumping. Survival missions were obviously a no, but with the help of a few people around me, I managed to get something known as reverse bungee. Now, without going into much detail about what it is, I think I'll just show you what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Was I scared doing it? Obviously. But did I survive it? Well, I'm giving this talk, aren't I? It was my first attempt, and my code worked. I tasted success, and I programmed my brain to it, repeat it until I become successful. Don't get me wrong, I still am afraid of heights. But now, I know how to face it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you my code for success. Success is equal to the number of attempts divided by the number of failures plus the number of attempts times the number of successes. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So in simpler terms, no pain, no gain. Thank you everyone for your time.